Hello everyone and welcome back to another quiz. So today's quiz, very nice topic, it's on the types of maps. And uh, this is very nice because I guarantee this will be a midterm question. I've seen it every year, every midterm. There's always kind of a what type of map is this, injective, surjective, stuff like that. And even though I probably will spell surjective wrong, I think I know how to figure it out. So let me uh, <laughs> hopefully teach you guys how. All right, guys, before we jump into the examples, there's one quick little thing I want to clear up, and that is the notation that you're going to see in a lot of these injective, surjective questions. And it's going to look something similar to the following. And yes, very confusing. That's why hopefully I can shed a little bit of light on this. I know when it comes to f of x is equal to x, you guys understand that. Well, at least I hope you do. If not, then maybe rethink this class a little bit, maybe. <laughs> All right, so the first one we're going to discuss is the, the red R right here. And what this is, is this is the domain. So this is going to be basically the x-axis, uh, the, the way I see it, this is the x-axis. So in this case, since we have r is just the reals, what's going to happen is we're going to plot our function for every value, every real value along the x-axis. So in this case, our plot would go from x is equal to negative infinity all the way to x is equal to positive infinity. That's what this one is. Now, the blue R, a little bit more tricky, this is the range. So this is the range of Y value the function outputs. And yes, this sounds a little confusing now, but I guarantee that when we go through the examples and I'm able to draw a picture, it'll shed a, a little bit more light on this. But I want to include this because these are the formal definitions. I don't want you guys to see the examples and get messed up with uh, the Clayton definitions. Because speaking of which, there is something I need to clear up before we start this example. Uh, I'm lazy. Uh, this won't come as a shock to many of you, but yes, I'm very lazy. So in the example, instead of r plus with the union 0, I just put r plus is equal to square bracket 0 comma infinity. So what this means is whenever I put r plus, it includes the value of 0 in the domain. Why do I do this? Well, to be honest, I'm just kind of lazy. Uh, Dr. Deeb, does things the correct way, the proper way. So for his definition of R plus, it is zero to infinity, but that range does not include the value of zero itself. If I really want to include the value of zero within that range, the best way to do it is a R plus with the union sign zero. So it's basically saying everything from zero to infinity and we include the value of zero. Again, this is just because I'm lazy. Don't be like me, be like Dr. Deeb. All right, so with this out of the way, let's jump right into the examples. So if we look at the first question right here, this is uh, kind of the, the nice one. Uh, two and three have some tricks. But we're given a function, and this function is very nice. It's just simply f of x is equal to x, or more simply, y is equal to x. And the goal of this quiz is to determine, is this an injective, surjective, or bijective function? Or is it none of the above? So there's actually a very, very simple way to kind of tell what, what they are. And we're going to start by talking about uh, injective function. So for an inje injective function, I can't even say these. You guys are going <laughs> to have to bear with me. What it basically means is there's only going to be one value of x associated to a value of y. So if I were to look at the point, let's say right here, at y is equal to 4. And I come on over to this point here, and then I come on down. Well, it's going to be at x is equal to 4. But x is equal to 4 is the only x value that will return me with a y value equal to 4. And since that's the case where only one value of x is associated to one value of y, what we could do is we can say that this is an injective function. Injective function. So I'm going to put that here. This is injective. And I know it sounds a little bit like we didn't talk about it very much, but you guys will see in the later cases kind of what I mean by one value of uh, x associated with the value of y. Uh, the second thing we're going to look at is, is it surjective? So we're going to, I guess we'll do that in pink. And what does that mean? Well, it means that for every value of y, so every value that were returned, there's an associated value of x with it. So if I, for instance, wanted a value of y is equal to 2, well, if I look at my function and go across and then I come down, well, there's a value of x is equal to 2. So for any value of y that I want under this domain, so the domain is actually going to be kind of what's important to you guys. So in this domain here, oh, and that looks absolutely horrible. Let me, let me switch that for you guys. I would not want to do that to your eyes on purpose. So in this domain here, any value of y in that domain I'll be able to find. So if I wanted to go up to, let's say, all the way up here to y is equal to 1,000, 
I can come all the way across and then there will be a value somewhere down here of x is equal to 1000. So since there's every value of y accounted for by a value of x, I can say that this is also surjective. Surjective. Now, this is a special case because if it's both surjective and injective, so if it's both of these right here, then we can say that the function in total, I'll go, oh, the purple's actually not showing up too well. Let me find something a little bit brighter for you guys. How about a bright blue? So therefore, since it's both injective and surjective, we can say that this function is bijective because it's both injective and surjective. And going back to the definitions of injective and surjective, we'll go to the next uh, example and you guys will see a lot more of what it means. So coming down to the second function, we have f of x is equal to x squared. And then I drew the plot here. And then this is where things are going to get interesting because now, unlike the last one where it just asked us to go from the reals to the reals, we have a case now where it's asking us to go from the reals to the real plus and then the real plus to the reals. And I'll explain exactly what that means kind of uh, in a second here. But this is a great example to show you guys exactly what I meant about that injective. So if we're looking at part A here from the reals to the reals, so nothing super special. Remember, I said for it to be injective, it can only have one value of x associated to a value of y. So if I were to go across right here at this value of y, what I'll see is there's actually two values of x that make that value of y. So let's say that this is y is equal to 4. Well, I know that, that happens at x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2. So since there are two values of x that correspond to the exact same value of y, this function right here, from the reals to the reals, is not injective. So I'm just going to put that down. It's not injective. And now you're going to be asking yourself, okay, Clayton, well, what is this reals to the reals? Like, I don't understand what that means. So the best way I can put it to you guys is this right here, the first number you're given, the gothic symbol you're given, that's where we're going to plot our function. That's where we're interested from. So if it's the regular real numbers at the beginning, I'm plotting my function from x is equal to negative infinity to x is equal to infinity. I, I consider the whole function. And then with the second letter here does is this is going to tell us kind of if the function is going to be surjective or not surjective uh, yeah surjective it just sounds like such a funny word so i think i was doing surjective in pink so if we're looking at the surjective of the function the surjectiveness I, i'm not sure if that's a word <laughs> if it is uh, i guess i'll coin it now and we're interested in the surjective function and we're interested in the reals what this means right here is if this function is surjective under these circumstances, there exists a value of y for every number in the reals. And if we look at this function right here, we can see that some of it's true, but some of it's actually not true. For instance, if I wanted y equals 10, let's say right here, well, that's no problem. I can come over to the side and then I can come down. And yes, there is a value of x that will give me y is equal to 10. So I'll just put y equal to 10. There is a real value to give me y equals to 10. However, let's say I wanted y is equal to negative 2. So y is equal to negative 2 down here. This case, I actually don't have a number. The function does not go into the negative region whatsoever. So there is no number. So in this case, this is also not surjective because there is no number surjective that will ever return me with y is equal to negative 2. There is no x value that I can put into that function to give me negative 2. But again, this is why it's important to look at that second number. Because when we come down here to part b, well, the injectiveness is going to stay the same because we're still plotting it from x is equal to negative infinity to infinity. So we can conclude again that, yes, this is going to be not injective because this is, again, the same as part a. However, when we're looking at that second term now, what this is saying is it's injective if the y values exist only in the positive range. So now, since it's only from the positive range, I don't care about y is equal to negative 2. That's not in the range or the domain I'm looking at. I'm only looking at numbers from 0 to positive infinity. And if that's the case, then yes, 
y is equal to 10, I have a value of x. If I wanted to go down here to y is equal to 1, then yes, I will have a value of x. If I wanted to go up to y is equal to, let's say, 10,000, I will have a value of x. So in this case, the, the function here, under these circumstances, is surjective. So this is the first case where it's not injective, but it is surjective. And again, that's because of that little plus sign right here. That little plus sign allows us to kind of disregard anything below. And if you guys remember from part A, it was those negative numbers that made it not surjective. Now, the third case, part C, is very, very interesting because it kind of did a little swap root. And then this is where I'm going to have to let you guys kind of remember. That first one here, the first one, this is where we plot, plot our function. So before, in the first two cases, we just plot it for every value of the reals. But now we're only considering the positive values of the real numbers. So now our function, I'm just going to erase uh, kind of what we had before. So I can make this extra clear to you guys. Oops. So this was our function before, like this. And this was plotted for every value of the reals. But now we're only interested in the positive region. So I'm going to switch because of that little plus sign up here. We're only interested in the positive region. So our actual function now is actually just that. Because we're only interested from x is equal to 0 onward to x is equal to to infinity. And if this is the case now, and we look, and let's say I look at a value of y is equal to 4 again, there is only one value here now of x that corresponds to y equals 4, and that's x is equal to 2. Because since we're not considering the negative region, that second root of negative 2 is uh, now gone. So in this case, the function is injective. Is injective. So this is kind of where things get real confusing based on this. However, if we look at the second kind of, uh, I, I always call them gothic numbers. If you look at the second gothic, we don't have that plus sign. It's all the real numbers. So if this is the case, what it's saying is there has to be a y value for every single y in the real numbers. So going all the way to the top. And again, since we don't have that negative region, since there is no y values in this negative region, no values of x to give us a y value in that negative region, this function under these circumstances is not surjective. So not surjective. So what's kind of nice is part, uh, okay. So again, as you guys can see, just as the cases, case A, both are not injective nor surjective. Uh, part B, it was surjective, but not injective. But then part C, it was injective, but not surjective. Now, that's kind of going through uh, doing a little bit of thinking. I don't like thinking. So what's nice is we're given uh, kind of a uh, number three, a part C, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to show you guys just kind of the quick, quick and easy way on how to find this. So what I like to do, if it's injective, all I draw is I draw a horizontal line. That's all I do. And if it intersects more than once, so in this case it intersects more than once, I can conclude that this is not injective. So not injective. And then the second thing I do is I, I look at the, the second letter. Oops, I guess, uh, yeah. I look at the second letter here, and I say, OK, there has to be a value of x to give me y and everything in the reals. However, for my function, I only have positive numbers. I don't have any negative numbers. So just looking at this, I can say that this is also not surjective. Because again, I'm interested in all the reals, but I have no value of x to give me any value of y in this negative region down there. All righty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase this really quick. So moving on to part B. Uh, again, same thing. I look at this and I say, okay, well, I'm still graphing my function for everything in the reals. I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. Oh, in this case, I got two intersections. Therefore, I can conclude that this is not injective. And then again, I look at my kind of my second letter here. And now it says, ooh, okay, I got to pay attention. There's a positive. So now, 
do I have a value of y for everything above zero? Well, if I look here, yes, I do. Again, if I wanted to go up to here to y is equal to, let's say, 70. <laughs> I'm sure some of you can guess the first number that came to my head. Uh, I can come over, and then I can come down. And yes, there is an x value to give me whatever that is. So I can conclude that this is surjective. So I'm going to put surjective. And then finally, for my last one, I'm just going to erase this again. Try and get as much out of there so I don't get confused. Uh, I say, OK, well, my function right now, this time, is only for the positive values of the real numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this away. I don't consider any negatives. So in this case, is it injective? Well, I'll draw a nice horizontal line. Now I see that I only have one intersection. So in this case, it is injective. So right here, I'm just going to put injective. And then for the surjective, I look at the second one. I say, OK, this is for every value of the reals. But again, like before, there is no value of x to give me any negative y values. So therefore, it is not surjective. Not surjective. So the injective part, I think that you guys will be absolutely fine with. This is something that, again, you just draw the horizontal line, nice and easy, easy peasy. However, the surjective part, that's where things get a little bit different. So what I'm going to recommend is if you're ever given something that says, let's say r, it's r plus, here's what you do. You plot the graph in this region. So here's where you plot the graph, plot graph based on that. And then what you do is you check if there's a value of y for all of this region. Check if you can get y for this region. Get y, I guess not in region, in this domain. So again, if I were to look at uh, part C here, I only plotted the graph in this region right here for the reals. That's why I only had the, uh, the, <laughs> the linear line on one side. And then I checked if I can get Y for every value in this region. But I can't because let's say for some reason I wanted Y is equal to negative 10. Well, there is no X value in the world. I can sub, in, sub into this equation up here that'll give me negative 10. So that's why it's not subjective. So that concludes uh, tutorial, not tutorial, I guess tutorial quiz, quiz number two. Uh, I hope it helped a little bit. I, I know it could be really confusing at first, but yes, this will be on the midterm. Guarantee there's gonna be one of these questions. Uh, they're nice, they're tricky. <laughs> so hopefully uh, I, I shed a little bit of light. If you guys have any questions, uh, just feel free to email me. So thank you guys all so much for listening. I will see you guys in quiz number three.